Hello NASCAR fans, I'm Chris Terrell, I'm here at BrewerPros.com bringing my race preview of the Coke Zero Sugar 400 from Daytona International Speedway. Second time we visited Daytona this year, but unlike the Daytona 500, we've got the new rules package which replaces the restrictor plate with the, t with the tapered spacer. Um, they used this same setup at Talladega. Things, you know, it really didn't change. There was pack racing, we've seen that. Um, so definitely not looking at any big changes because of that rule package. Uh, from a strategy standpoint this week, things are going to be a little bit different. Let's look at the track here. Um, Definitely head over to some excellent stuff over at Fantasy Racing Cheat Sheet. A lot of free stuff. You can check out tracks. You can check out some of the practice speeds, um, previous practice speeds, loop data statistics. And then um, once you get your subscription, there's a lot more stats in there as well. Great site. Check them out. Um, it's where I go every week to start my research. So we've got two and a half mile trial. So the, the other super speedway in the series, 31 degrees of banking here. So we're definitely going to be talking about, you know, it may come up where we say plate racing. Well, it's not plate racing anymore, but it's pretty much the same thing. Super speedway racing is, is what I'll be changing it to now. So the strategy is a little bit different when it comes to that. We're not looking, going to look at the last six races tab here on the cheat sheet. So the big difference here is that we don't see uh, dominators. There's only 200, uh, let's go the summer race here. we got 163 laps um, in the race, 160 laps in this race. So it's not as many laps as the Daytona 500. It's not as many laps as other races, so there's not as much uh, opportunity to lead laps. And you'll see drivers go from the back to the front three to four laps time just with the drafting that goes on at Daytona. So we're not really looking at dominators. Place differential is going to be king this week. You're going to hear a lot about place differential. You're going to see some lineup construction that you're maybe not familiar with if you haven't played any super speedway DFS NASCAR before. Um, it's going to look a little bit different to you. Um, we're going to you know, get into leaving salary on the table. I'm going to be talking about that as well because that's not really going to matter. So let's go back. Let's look at some of these races. I'm going to mostly concentrate on the summer races. A um, little bit different race. It's in the summertime. So that's kind of what we're going to concentrate on. So we'll look at last year's summer race. Eric Jones got his first career win. As you can see, only three drivers, and they finished 8th, ninth, and 10th, started inside the top 10 and finished there. We go back even further down to the top 20, add two more drivers. We've got five drivers out of 20 that started inside the top 10. Um, as you can see, I've got this down below as well. So we had five drivers start outside the top 20 and finish top 10. If you look at their starting positions, we've got 29th, 24th, 28th, 25th, and 31st. So nothing really too far back in the field. Um, so a lot of times on a normal weekend, I'm going to be looking at drivers starting, you know, say 20th to 32nd, 33rd, depending on what driver it is. Um, I'm not really going to reach out too far for some of the guys that maybe aren't super speedway racers that are starting outside of top 30. This week's going to be a little bit different. I'm going to expand that a little bit um, with the drivers that I'm looking at in my player pool, just because qualifying was rained out. So the or I guess there was lightning in the area. They couldn't tech cars in time um, more than it rained later in the night. But uh, either way, qualifying was canceled. They set the field by owner's points. Um, so as you can see, we'll just go over and we'll look at the qualifiers. You can see all the top drivers are going to be starting near the front. You've got Joey Logano. You've got Kyle Busch. Then you've got Kozlowski, Harvick. Um, as you can see, they're not ranked very high in my overall model. They're not the greatest super speedway drivers. But, you know, outside Logano and Kozlowski, I give a lot of credit to them. Um, they've been very good. A little bit better at Talladega, but either way. Um, so it's going to make it a little bit tough because normally we're going to get a few of these drivers on a normal week. They're going to start outside the top 20. They're going to be great targets um, for DFS. Well, this week all your top drivers are going to be starting in the front because they're set by owner because the field's set by owner points. So I'm going to expand that a little bit. A lot of my lineup construction is going to come probably from. I'm probably, you know, looking at the six, say six drivers on DraftKings, maybe two drivers from the 10th to 15th, 16th starting position, um, and then like three drivers outside the top 20, um, and then one, you know, it's kind of going to depend there. So I'm just, I'm looking at expand a little bit more in that 10th to 15th, even 15th to 20th starting position, rather than just limiting it to roster drivers starting outside the top 20. Um, which that's kind of the way everyone's really looking at it. So I'm going to expand a little bit. And I do think um, we do see some some fast laps um, and laps led from Logano. Um, I've got him highlighted green here. He's one of the drivers that's starting up, you know, inside the top 10 that I will be looking at this week. He's an excellent plate racer. 
super speedway racer. Uh, he's starting first. He's got Kozlowski starting right behind him, so I think he's going to get a good push off the start. I think he can get out and lead some laps. Not really worried about that Dominator too much, but he is one of the drivers I think maybe could lead 15, 20 laps and also have that winning upside as well because he's been, he's been good at Daytona. But there is a lot of variance, a ton of variance here at Daytona, so not worried about having a lineup of, you know, that I've totally feeling comfortable with top drivers. I'm going to use um, some of these lower drivers. And as you can see, guys that I've keyed in on right away are guys starting outside of the top 10s. We've got Kyle Larson starting 13th. Definitely liking that. Clint Boyer starting 16th. I like as well. Eric Jones is one of my top guys this week, especially on FanDuel, only 8,200. He's starting 17th. He won this race last year. We're just going to go have a look at his Daytona record here. Outside of that win, he was third here uh, at the Daytona 500 this year. He crashed out in the Daytona 500 last year, but then again in 2017, um, his first summer race at Daytona in the Cup Series, he finished there with the top 10 as well. And a lot of those starting positions, the only one that was really bad is when he started eight. That's when he got in the accident. So he started outside the top 15 in every race. So he's definitely going to be a core driver for me starting 17th, probably points per dollar. He's going to be my favorite guy, so I'm just going to go ahead. I'm um, going to kind of build a roster here while I talk about guys, show you, you know, how I'm going to go about doing that. So he's going to be the first guy I plug in. The other guy that really stood out to me, I talked about him in the um, a little bit in the chat, a little bit uh, throughout the week. Um, track history's number two in my models, Ryan Newman. Um, he's he's good at Daytona. He's very consistent, as you can see. He's getting top 15 finishes, I believe, in six of his last eight. Um, very good in the summer as well. So we got eight. 5th in the summer, 18th, and 8th. So really good tracker, three top 10s in his last four summer races. And going and looking at his starting position, 18th, you know, I definitely think he's got that top 10 upside, top 5 upside even um, at this track. So definitely looking at him at 18th. This week is a core driver for me, so I'm going to go plug him in as well. Just kind of going to give you a, a quick lineup that I'm doing. Next up is his teammate, um, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., also good on plate tracks in general. He won here. We'll go look at his, he won the summer race, I believe it was 2016, 2017. So overall, he hasn't been as consistent as Newman, but he has shown the upside. He has shown to be a good plate racer, um, good in the draft. The thing with him for, you know, GPP, I always say for him is, you know, wrecky spin house. He can always get in a, it seems like he can always get in a wreck or cause a wreck and take cars out because he's very aggressive. Um, so it's good on one hand to be that aggressive, but it's it's also some downside as well. So, I mean, when it comes to Daytona, I'm not playing cash games anyway, so um, I'm willing to take almost any chance with any driver in the field. So Stenhouse and Newman is going to be someone I'm going to be looking at. Um, that's something as well that I'm looking at. Stacking teammates. So if I'm making some Logano lineups, I'm almost, I, let's say I make 10 Logano lineups, at least eight of those lineups, seven or eight of those lineups, I'm going to have Kozlowski with them just because they're going to be working together. Uh, maybe six or seven, about 60% of my Logano lineups are going to be um, with Kozlowski in there to get that teammates, some with Larson. Um, you're going to see a lot of that. Uh, like manufacturers as well. Like you're going to see the Chevys work together. You're going to see the Fords work together, the Toyotas. But if they have a chance, if they have a choice between them, they're not going to choose. A Chevy driver is not going to choose a Toyota driver to to go with um, in the draft. So that's kind of the reason we look at uh, stacking teammates as well. So Newman and Stenhouse definitely make sense for me. Uh, Boyer and Suarez, I definitely like. They're both kind of in that mid-range. they got those mid um, 15 and 16 start in positions there. So that works out for him. Um, Eric Jones, I'm not really looking to use a bunch of Kyle Busch starting second. First of all, he's not great. He doesn't like the super speedway races. He's not that great here. He's expensive and he's starting second, so I'm probably not going that route. Martin Truex Jr. has been a little bit better on these tracks. I'm looking at him, but more or less, I'm looking at going Jones and Hamlin would be my uh, Toyota teammates that I'm going to go with. And then sticking with that Toyota, I'm going to go with Matt Benedetto there as well. He's very cheap. He started in 25th. And if we just go have a quick look at his record, if I could spell, there we go. 28th in the 500, 7th in the summer race last year, 27th in the in the 500 in 2018. 
13th in the summer. Um, so his last two summer races, 13th and 7th, while he was outside the top 25 when it came to Daytona 500s. So looks like he's a little bit better in the summer race as well. So that's kind of my Toyota 3-driver three, three driver stack there. Other drivers that I like, um, especially there's going to be a lot of love for the guys in the value range this week, which is maybe nice in the fact that it should lower ownership and spread the ownership out a little bit. Because, I mean, Brendan Gone starting 39th is almost a lock. For, if you're playing cash games, he's a guy that I'd be plugging in 100% um, since joining Beard Motorsports in 2017 to pretty much run the super speedways. He's, he's gone 11th, 7th, 28th, 12th, and 23rd. And again, he's another driver that's been a heck of a lot better in the summer, 12th and 7th in his last two summer races when he was outside the top 20 at the, at the 500 in February. So starting 39th, I mean, he's got top, I'd say he's got top 10 upside. He's probably, I think, more realistically like 10th to 20th place car. But starting 39th, that's almost, you know, you're almost getting 20 place differential points with him at a very, very low price. So definitely looking at Brendan Gaughan. Um, Chris Buescher starting 22nd. Definitely looking at him as well. I'm just going to keep looking at these guys' track records here. 37th of the 500, but 5th last year. So he had a top 5, top 5 in the 500 before that, and a top 10 at the summer race here at Daytona as well. So he stands out. Um, Ryan Priest. It's a very small sample size with Priest in his rookie season. But he's come out and he's finished top 10 at both Daytona 500 and the race at Talladega. So he looks, you know, like I said, it's a small sample size, but he looks strong on the super speedways. Getting in the draft, looks comfortable in the draft. And knows how to, you know, stay out of the wrecks. I mean, sometimes that's impossible. But being in the right position at the right time of the race, knowing when drivers are going to be aggressive and staying away from maybe those drivers, um, staying closer to the front of the pack or staying at the back of the pack or whatever that is at that time of the race he knows how to you know stay out of the chaos it seems so i mean at 4500 on fanduel 6000 on DraftKings, he makes a lot of sense as well so that's just kind of some of the strategy so just quickly run down that one more time i'm just going to go back over here um like i said we're going to put brendan gone in there uh you want to go with another cheapy you know stay go busher um so we still got 12,000 left over um, in our lineup so you can pretty much go plug anyone that you don't a lot of times on a normal race people say okay I've got 12,000 left I'm just going to quickly scroll right to the top take the top guy um, that's shown some speed in practice that's not necessarily the case so with this I don't mind going Logano starting first but as you can see our theme in this lineup we've got three drivers starting in the top 20 we've got one just outside the top 20 we've got one at the back I'm probably going to stick just with this lineup construction with place differential so I'm going to look for another driver's place differential I talked about. Um, and I'm just going to kind of scroll through here. I think you can go with the Benedetto. That's leaving the almost 6,000 on the table. I don't mind that at all. Um, so you can pretty much go anyway. I mean, you can go up. I do like, you know, if you want to get another one, a fourth driver starting in between 15th to 20th, I'm perfectly fine with that. I don't mind Paul Menard starting 20th. A little more of a GPP is going to be a little bit less exposure for me this week. We can go up. I'm probably going to end up siding with uh, Clint Boyer and leaving 2800 on the table. I really like that lineup from a place differential standpoint. Um, so that's kind of one way I would build a place differential lineup. If you want to build more of a stacking lineup, a couple ways you can go. Uh, I talked about uh, Jones and Hamlin. You know, you could put him with Gone and Busher. You could get Priest in there. Get a couple guys starting way back. Um, De Benedetto starting outside the top 20. So with my two guys that are, oh, sorry, I got Alex Bowman in there. I want to go Jones. So I got one driver starting top 10, which I'm not going to be doing a whole bunch this race. Like I talked about, place differential is going to be king. So with these lineups, I'm never, ever going to go more than two drivers starting inside the top 10, and rarely am I going to go two. Um, like I said, with the kozlowski Logano stack, I, I would make that exception. Um, <clears throat> but for the most part, it's going to be one driver starting inside the top 10, if any. And then after I get that one, I'm going to be going back in the field. So we got Jones 17th, we got Gone 39th, Priest 26th, the Benedetto 25th, and then again, you've got 12,600 left over. You can you can go. Um, I don't mind going Larson starting 13th. Again, with Boyer starting 16th, um, Suarez. Pretty much any way you can go, but don't worry about the salary. 
Um, definitely leave some on the table. You don't need to fill your whole salary this week just because a lot of chaos ensues at Daytona. The Xfinity race was was amazing last night. We've seen teammates uh, in call of grace and go one, two, three, finish at the end. So that kind of exemplifies a little bit talking about the stacking teammates and how they're going to be working together. No one could pass those three at the end of the race. No one could really make a move and get out of line and try and pass Chastain. Um, just because you know you had the other two drivers there, so it was it worked out really well from a team standpoint there. So I definitely like stacking teammates. I'm not worried about leaving salary on the table. Um, I'm looking for, like I said, one. If I'm doing any drivers in my lineup inside the top ten, I'm generally I'd say 90% of those lineups, 95% is going to be just one driver inside the top ten. I will make the exception for a couple stacks, but for the most part, we're looking for drivers. Um, starting 10th to 20th, maybe three of those, probably max of three of those drivers in a lineup, and then uh, 20th to 30th, I really like that range, and then you can grab, there's some really nice values starting outside the top 30 as well, so getting a good mix of that, and obviously if you're doing a driver inside the top 10, I would concentrate on the rest of your drivers from maybe outside the top 20, and maybe instead of going three drivers from 10th to 20th, maybe limit that to one to two if you're going with a driver inside the top 10. It's all about getting place differential points, especially on DraftKings that I've showed you here. Um, but it is this going to be the same on FanDuel just because of where we see the drivers near the back. They've got a chance. Everyone's kind of got a chance um, this week. Maybe not to win the race, but at least to finish top 10s. And, and top 10s for a lot of these smaller teams um, is huge. Priest gone uh de Benedetto. you seen how de Benedetto the other week when he got uh, i think he was fifth or fourth or whatever at that race he it's sonoma he, he was very excited so it's huge for these smaller teams finishing up there and this is a week where they can really put the best into their equipment and try and get those top finishes so it's kind of the way i'm looking at it from a strategy standpoint um if you have any questions hit me up in the roto pros chat room um got the nascar news channel make sure to follow that i've um, got bob pockers and jeff gluck in there giving out all the top information um, when it comes to nascar any rules changes drivers going to the back um william byron will go to the back of the field at the start of the race but will let's just go look at his starting position 12 so he's going to be like i wouldn't say a full fade for me he's probably going to be low on going to the back of the field but keeping that position kind of I guess a GPP play um, lower end exposure for me but that's one piece of news and uh, you can hit me up on Twitter as well at Jaeger under, underscore bombs nine you can leave a comment in this video and I'll also be going live this afternoon um, with another video so if you got questions make sure to join me in that video as well it's going to be around 4 to 5 p.m. Eastern not 100% sure yet exactly on the time so probably gonna fall somewhere right in the middle 4 30 p.m. Eastern we'll say I will post that link on Twitter as well as in the Rotor Pros chat room as well so make sure to follow me um, join the chat I've got some good trials going on right now you can get a trial come see what we're all about at Rotor Pros and come get some green screens with us thanks a lot talk to you this afternoon good luck everyone